Hello and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial. My name is Legion and today I'll be taking you through how to add our new template for the 787. Now this aircraft previously had appeared to be locked, however, thanks to the community that we have behind us, we've managed to locate a new method of doing this. Now thank you to Ozwookie for discovering this one and creating the slight guide that we have. Now I've gone ahead and created a template for the 787 which will be available in the description of this video. The team are working on all of the other aircraft here to get as many templates as we can out to you guys as soon as possible. Now for this template you will simply be able to drag and drop this into your sim. It will go ahead and load straight up. However, when you're finished doing your edits, I suggest that you go through and edit the file names to your liking, of course. Now, for this one, unfortunately, it does have the same error that we faced with the 747, where parts of the aircraft are mirrored. So for those of you who follow the Mega Pack currently, you'll notice that the 747 on the right-hand side of the fuselage actually does like a mirror of the left-hand side logo at the front. However, on this one, it's a little bit different. So the whole right hand side of the aircraft is correct. The whole left hand side of the aircraft is completely reversed. So you can see here, everything reads as it should. However, if we jump over to the other side, everything is flipped and backwards, which isn't exactly what we want. And of course, the same thing goes for this down here. Now, as you can see here, we have the option to switch liveries, which is fantastic. And we do actually have a couple liveries that have been created by the community available in the Discord. We're currently in the process of getting them all converted to work with the new method. And Clink does plan to do a video next week in terms of how you can add those existing um, mega pack liveries in with this method, which definitely will allow you to have that a bit more flexibility in terms of what aircraft uh, or liveries you would like to see compared to having all of them, of course. And not to mention, it allows you to download uh, what you want instead of the entire pack first. Okay, so I'll leave the rest of that explanation off to Clink. Um, but for now, we're going to jump over to our file manager. Now, as you can see here, I have already opened up my community folder. For those of you who don't know where this is, it's in your app data folder under roaming and then Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're using the Xbox Pass edition of this game, it may be in a different location. All the locations are listed below in the description. Okay, so what we're doing here is that we are first looking at the template. Now, as you can see here, I do have the Eddie had one and of course the template. Today we're going into the template one and of course we have these files. Now for some of you, you may know this if you've been doing custom uh, liveries before, but we want to go into the manifest. Once you're in the manifest, this is where basically the game finds out what file it is because the community folder also can have scenery and other add-ons in it. So of course, make sure that this is set to aircraft. If yours isn't, set it as aircraft. The title, this is where you would put in the title of your um, skin. So for example, if it was Qantas, you might put in Qantas here. And then of course, create a name. You can go ahead and do that. As for all the other options, we've done some testing and it doesn't appear that this needs to change whatsoever. Uh, you can keep that as is. Okay, once you've done that, jump into your layout.json file. For those of you, as again, uh, if you've done your templates previously or liveries, you'll already know how to do this part. But for those of you who are new to this, you want to first go into your uh, layout.json file here and make sure that we update whatever this template is. So for example, my folder within sim objects and aeroplanes is actually called dash template. So you want to make sure that this name that's over here on the file matches what's in this first section here. So as long as that matches, it knows where to look for that. But then once it's in there, it doesn't know what it needs to look like. So we need to reference the texture file. So in this case, you can see I've done texture.template with a capital T. This part's important because if the file name is, let's say a lowercase in this stage, it won't find it. It's, uh, I don't know why it, it can't work that out, but it doesn't. Anyway, we go into here and of course you can see texture.template with a capital T. Now, before we go into that folder, I suggest you open up aircraft.cfg. Make sure that this bit up here, base container, is set to whatever your aircraft is. Now, this goes for the next couple of parts of this video. 
finding the base container location is based on your default files for the game. So for this aircraft in particular, we're looking at a Sobo B787 underscore 10. So if we go back to our game files, go back to packages official, um, mine's in Steam, but yours might be, I think it's one store. Go in here and then we look for the 787. So we've got that here. Once in here, you want to go to sim objects, airplanes, and this folder here, the name of this is what you want to copy. So whatever you're working on, they all have it. So for example, if we jump into another one real quick here, so let's jump into the C152. So same thing, sim objects, airplanes, and we would copy that folder name right there. Now, what you would do with that is link that up here. Make sure you have the dot dot and the backslash. Update here your title. So this is what it would appear in game. So you can see up here, it says Eddie had airways currently for me. And then make sure that your texture is the same here. So make sure, for example, with the texture before I said it had the capital T, make sure it's the exact same in that and go through and alter that as you normally would. Okay, so once we've done that, I'm just going to jump back into the file here and uh, go back here. And we just want to go back to our community folder. We'll go back into templates and I'll quickly fly through these. There we are. So now that we're in the template file, you'll see all of those files that it goes to reference. Now this part you can go through and use the PSDs that are provided in the description to go through and edit whatever areas you need to. Now this does apply to all of those other aircraft out there. Of course, if they don't have a paint kit like I've done for the 787 today, then you may need to do a bit of the UV grid and go and find those locations. But what we're wanting here is the texture.cfg. We wanna open that one up. Now this part is very important because if you don't do it, then your aircraft will not appear correct at all in game. So what we want to do here is with the fallback one, we just want to make sure that this first bit here is set to whatever you're working on. So that file name that we went and found before, make sure that that goes in there and then just hit save. Aside from that, there's not really much else to do. I'm going to quickly jump over to my storage here. So this is what you'll be able to download. Now, of course, I've only done the 787. The other files are here available. Uh, of course, the blank template will be the one that you're provided with today. But I'm going to jump into the 787 folder, which has the PSDs. Uh, I will also include them in the download. Once you open them, you'll notice all of these here. Now, they all do different sections of the aircraft. I've already opened mine up in Photoshop, so I'm going to show you that here. Now, this layer here, do not touch, don't touch it. Simple as that. Because that controls, as you can see, all the background info for the game to work out what's what. And of course, create those generic textures that we have. Now, as for painting, now I have gone through and added a couple of sections for each area. Of course, you have the raccoon mask that is here that you can turn on. And that'll create that little black highlight around the cockpit windows. That's optional, so off by default, but you can turn it on and you'll get that effect. Now, as for painting the areas, all you want to do for that is to double click each layer that you want painting and go to color overlay. And we just want to go up to this box here and you go through and set whatever color. So you'll notice that that changes the whole fuselage for you. So you can go through and set that to whatever you like. Same for nose gear and every other file in here. Now I suggest putting your content in the your content folder simply because then it becomes very easy to manage. And when time comes to exporting, you can simply hide guides and it won't remove any of your work. So you can see here under guides, we have several guides in here that all cover the antennas, course the inside and outside of let's say the landing gear on this file in particular but in other areas it might be the engine or something like that so i'm going to turn them back on but that's practically it for this video if you enjoyed please leave a thumbs up and a comment outside of that make sure you subscribe and hit the bell if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video